down on the boat today doing a, a little bit of maintenance checking that hasn't leaked too much as it's rained a lot recently and it's fine um i need to do some work on the the boot around the base of the mast um because that's leaking a bit oh coffee in a minute turn that off <clears throat> and i want to get a diesel heater fitted uh, which i've got and there's all the tubing and piping in place so that's really handy uh, so now I've got to dash off to Plymouth to go and get some uh, cabling because the the diesel heater that I've bought, the control unit doesn't fit. The, the cabling isn't long enough to get the control system back into into the cabin. So that would be really annoying having to get up at you know <laughs> three in the morning to turn the heater on and off. So I've got to do that and get some more gas. Happy days lovely down here it was really a uh, mild night it's what it's november now like 7th of november or something like that uh, uh but it was lovely and mild had a really good sleep last night splendid all right so i've just popped down to uh marine electricals down in plymouth and picked up a load of cable that i need that i ordered ages ago just before i got covid and I've got a car full of bits, so hopefully I've got enough to get this diesel heater fitted. But this morning I washed all the seagull shit off the boat and realised that the um, the cockpit drain is blocked, which isn't good. So I've been driving around trying to find bits and pieces that I'm going to need to clean, <laughs> empty, clear the uh, cockpit thing. So anyway, as always happens with boats, you know, you go down to do one job and you find out um, there are other things that need doing and they take priority and you don't get your job done. <laughs> Going to give a bit of an overview of the project so that uh, it's more obvious what's going on. So in that back locker there, um, there is the diesel heater and the old diesel heater, the yeah, Eberspatcher, was mounted in there and there's a 12 volt power cable coming through the little bulkhead between that hatch and this hatch and uh, well sorry the Eberspatch power came through there there's a 12 volt feed sat in that locker at the moment which comes all the way back into the boat and connects up with the engine with I don't think any inline fuses or anything um, <clears throat> Underneath the floor, down under there, in the bottom of that hatch, and well, just round between this one and this one, is the pump on the outside of this bulkhead. So I had to sit in that locker yesterday and contort myself to unscrew the old pump, and I've now got the new one fitted. Here's the old pump. Look at that beauty. So the new one is now down in that locker, waiting to be connected up. So uh, on the wiring loom, there's basically on this Chinese diesel heater, there's one um, output socket on the actual heater and one loom that connects to it with three spurs going off. Basically there's power, which I'm gonna connect on two posts in that locker uh, to the existing power feed and then there's a two pin cable that also will need to come through here and go onto the back of the pump. So the pump's got power and control. Well, power basically, the controller must be in the, uh, in the heater unit. And then the problematic, well not problematic really, but the, the time consuming bit is getting the feed for the controller all the way through here under there, down into, round the back of these cupboards, under the cooker, back up through the food locker and onto, mounted onto the back of this bulkhead here. And it's just occurred to me today, cause I don't know why it didn't occur to me yesterday, but I can reuse this cable, um, which has got more strands than I need. I only need three, but I can use this and solder on the uh, new controller which only has three cables and I can also at the other end I can solder the other end of this cable into the back of the existing this is the new 
diesel heater wiring loom. Okay, so I've got the controller end all soldered on nicely. There's the controller. So now all that remains to be done is the same job at the other end, which is going to be a lot trickier because it's outdoors and it's in the locker, which means the little gas torch is going to struggle to get everything hot enough. And it's going to be awkward. <clears throat> See how this goes. So here we have the outside work to do. I've got to connect these three. These three, two. These three. Now it's not as bad as I thought because I've got enough cable uh, and there's a hole that this can fit through. So I can do it out here rather than trying to do it down in the bottom of the locker. So that's not so bad. So let's get this wired up now. So here's a little tip for stripping back sheathing. If you just make a small cut in it, and then just start the tear and then you use one of the existing wires and pull it down back through it'll open the sheathing as far as you want without any danger of cutting the existing wires anyway i think you get the point so you use the wire to pull through the sheathing and uh it stops using any knife to try and cut this sheathing, in which case you might cut the sheathing of the individual wires. So the wires that I don't need, I've cut at different lengths, so that when the heat shrink comes over, it's not just a, an abrupt change in depth, that it'll taper quite nicely over that down onto these three. Conditions are getting a bit worse now. It's getting wetter and wetter out here, but that's all soldered up and heat shrunk. And now I'm going to put the bigger heat shrink on to just hold all the cables together nicely. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. That's all quite neat and tidy. So I've got to go and fix the other end now. And then it's connecting it all up. <laughs> the forecast today was supposed to be uh, mild, but overcast. Uh, it hasn't turned out that way, but at least it's mild, so I've had a couple of warm nights on the boat whilst I fixed the heater. It was sort of four degrees last week, and it would have been pretty chilly in here. Um, but yeah, I think it was 11, 12 last night, it was fine. But it's grim today, it's grim, you can't really see uh, the Tamar Bridge. The Tamar Bridge is somewhere down in the gloom there. You can see Car Green though, just. There's Car Green over in the murky old distance. Everything's wired up now, uh, apart from the actual heater. So I've managed to run the loom. The loom's connected to positive and negative on posts in uh, in this locker here. So look, oh, not ideal. I don't like those bare metals being exposed. I'll try and replace those with some connectors. Uh, the reason they're on posts is because they're dissimilar size cables. So using like crimp connectors isn't very good. Solder's a bit tricky. So it's better to put rings on it or, or actually it really, it'd be great to have a connector that's specifically for those two types of cables, like an auto connector that I can just clip in. But for now, that'll do for testing. So I've now got to get in here and try and connect up all of this on the underside of this heater. Uh, the connector's got to go in, the fuel pipe, the exhaust, uh, and the heat air, hot air outlet. So uh, that's all good. Should be fun. So it's all connected up. Have a little smell test. Everything smells all right. It didn't hear any bangs when I turned it all on. The connector's connecting. More interestingly, however, we have something on the controller. So I need to put it in prime mode, which I have to push these two at the bottom corners and then this one. So I'm going to try that now. H off. Oh, not those ones then. Oh, I can hear the pump. And I can go and 
look for signs of fuel coming up through here. There it goes. Brilliant. So I should turn that off. So the, to turn the priming mode off, I had to press those two again. So uh, I know this draws quite a lot of current. I've got a little meter here that says how much has been drawn. Zero amps at the moment uh, and powers. So what I'm gonna do is start the engine just while I test to see if it will fire up. Because apparently it draws like 110 amps or something. I just don't wanna deplete the battery all that much. So the engine's going. Uh, I'm not sure what I gotta do now. I think I just press this button and hope for the best. On, there we go. So I'm gonna go and have a little look now. Uh, that's a bit worrying. That looks like maybe the exhaust is the rear one. We're gonna have a feel. So the engine's going. Uh, I'm not sure what I've got to do now. I think I just press this button and hope for the best. On. There we go. So I'm going to go and have a little look now. Well, it might actually be working because there's quite a lot of uh, amp hours being drawn now. So I think maybe it's starting the glow flux. It's going through its startup cycle. It can take a while. I think this kind of indicates that the glow plugs are happening. I'm not quite sure. I think that will start move flashing or something, I don't know. Well, it lives. It fired up first time. Uh, it went through its startup cycle. So, all good. Looks like I've got a heater. Oh my god, it's really toasty. It's fantastic. Oh, it's going to be cooking in... Ah, that's really good. What an amazing difference that's going to make. Woohoo! There's also a, an outlet here in the forepeak. That's amazing. Oh, it's going to be so lovely. This one, I guess, because the forepeak's smaller, you can shut up so that uh, it doesn't get too hot in there while you're trying to heat the main cabin. Fantastic. 